I certainly am appreciative of your invitation to appear before you here today to talk about <clears throat> black child development under white supremacy. A very, very important topic indeed because it is the root of many of the issues and problems that we discuss so often in these types of forums. I, of course, think it is very important that uh, when we talk about the black child, that we have some idea of who or what the black child is. Because too often we hear people saying, I happen to be black. <laughs> you know, as if black is something that fell on us, unfortunately, some misfortune, you know. And also there is the implication often in that kind of phrase that except for our blackness, we are just like everybody else. So consequently, we are colored people, you know. We've just been colored over, but in a sense, we are white people who just happen to be black. It's much deeper than that, ladies and gentlemen. The black child is unique. It is not a duplicate of the white child. It is not a colored rendition of white children. It's very important that you know that because if you start off with that premise, no matter how good your intentions, you are going to do a disservice to your children. If you are going to do the right things about your children, you must know them, which means that you must study their history and their psychology. You cannot study the history of Europeans and the psychology of the European child and apply that psychology directly to black children. One of the major problems in education today is that we have a school system, and your children have inherited a school system that was designed to teach the white child. A school system that is based on the developmental psychology of white children. That psychology develops out of the history and experience of a people. Psychology, you must recognize, reflects the individual's history and experience. That is why if you go to a psychologist's office or psychiatrist's office or social worker's office, they must take your case history. They cannot reach into the files and get anybody's case history and say, now let me see and let me explain you in terms of this case history. They have to speak directly to you and get that information from you. Otherwise, they misinterpret you. Why do they get a case history? Because they recognize that to a very significant extent, the way a person sees the world, relates to the world, behaves in the world, the attitudes, feelings, and emotions, that person's abilities and so forth, are intimately related to that individual's unique history and experience. The same thing is true of a people. The history and experience of African American people is not the history and experience of European American people. These histories are diametrically opposed. We have some Negroes who run around and say, I am an American. They live in abstractions. The meaning is termed. Besides, if it had meaning, it wouldn't mean the same thing for the two people. Because the African American experience of slavery in the United States is not the white American experience of slave mastery in the United States. A whole psychology comes from these two histories. A whole set of attitudes, a whole way of seeing the world and dealing with the world comes from these two histories. So you're both saying that you are American does not resolve the difference and does not resolve the psychology. Consequently, you cannot hide behind euphemistic platitudes about being an American or being a human being or all these other words you've used to escape your reality and your history and get away with it. It'll only do harm to yourself. The educational psychology upon which the education of children is based is an educational psychology based on the history and experience of white folk. That is the reason why it is not working for our children. 
that's why you have to study the developmental psychology of your own children first and then relate that psychology to their education. But if you go and get the psychology of white children, ignore the history and experience of our people, and seek to impose that psychology, both in your pedagogical approaches and other approaches, the education will make our children dumb, and that's exactly what it does. Your love will not be enough. Your good intentions will not be enough. Because if you have the wrong knowledge and the wrong understanding, you will still destroy despite your good intentions. So it becomes very important for you to know your children and to study their development, because that development is unique. When I left New York, I was looking at New York Times that was talking about how the evolutionary history of mankind had been traced back to the so-called African Eve. And no matter which way they work it, the history of man leads back to African man and to the fact then that African man is the mother and father of mankind. This is, this is what your children represent. They're not just colored children. The genes that you carry in your bodies are not mere chemical packets that determine how tall you're going to be or determine other physiological features or some psychological features. These genes that we carry in our bodies are also capsulated forms of history. In other words, we carry in our bodies the complete history of our people from the very beginning. Every experience that they've had, biological, cultural, and otherwise, has been in some way encoded in our genetic code. So when we talk about these children then, if we're talking about African man and woman as the fathers of mankind, then they carry that history in their bodies. And this is not carried by any other children on this earth. This is their history. If we are then to talk about African man as laying down the first civilizations on this earth as developing language social relations, governments, science, and so forth, that history, too, is encoded in our genes. And this is what it means to be a black child, you see. The biological evolutionary history of black people is not the biological evolutionary history of white folk. This body, these bodies that we refer to as African bodies, where African bodies shaped to adapt to the African soil, African geography and geology. Therefore, they cannot be duplicates of European bodies. Therefore, ultimately, to even understand in detail the biology of the African body, you must come to study the biological evolutionary history of African people. That's why even, ladies and gentlemen, even in modern medicine, we are recognizing that the African body does not react in the same way to medicines and other things as does the European body. Now doctors are beginning to realize what they realized even in the 60s and 70s, but because it was politically unwise, they did not talk about it. And that was the idea that you must take the ethnicity of the individual in mind if you're to give them the best medical treatment. Because the biological history of a people is still represented in their very bodies.